Chapter 8 Dink set the flashlight on the floor and tied one end of the rope to the folding steps. Josh formed a loop in the other end, big enough for Ruth Rose to step in. He stood on the table and handed her the loop. Are you sure you want to do this? Dink asked. It'll be easy, Ruth Rose said. I climb down the rope ladder from my cousin's treehouse all the time. We'll hold the rope till you're ready to go down, Josh said. He added, be careful of those teeth. Okay, give me a minute. Ruth Rose's face disappeared. Some of the slack rope went with her. All right, she yelled, just lower me real slow. The boys felt the rope tighten with Ruth Rose's weight. They let the rope slip slowly through their fingers. Dink felt the friction making his palms burn. Then the rope went totally slack. Is she down? Josh asked. They both heard someone banging on the door in Tyrone's side. I'll be right back, Ruth Rose yelled. Dink and Josh sat and leaned against a curved wall. Ruth Rose's flashlight was growing dim, so Dink shut it off. Wish this place had air conditioner, Josh said after a minute. He wiped sweat off his face with his t-shirt. Why not wish for a full refrigerator while you're at it, Dink said. Josh grinned. Or a microwave and a pizza. But I'd settle for a big fan. The boys sat in the dark. Dink felt sweat trickling into his eyes. I'm cooking, Josh moaned. Don't be such a baby, Dink said. Imagine what it would be like inside a real Tyrannosaurus. Josh giggled in the dark. Did dinosaurs eat kids, he asked. No, Josh, because humans didn't live then, Dink said. Besides, if a T-Rex got one taste of you, he'd spit you out. Josh poked Dink in the ribs. Dink poked him back. Just as Josh put a wrestling hold around Dink's neck, they heard something thump outside. Josh gulped. Do you suppose it's Dean coming to get the money? Dink crawled to the door and put his ear against it. The door opened, and Dink nearly fell on top of Judd. Behind Judd stood Officer Fallon and Ruth Rose. You sure get yourself in some pickles, Officer Fallon said, shining his flashlight in Dink's eyes. Good thing I found Judd, Judd at the fireworks. Judd lowered the steps so Dink and Josh could climb down to the ground. Thanks, Josh said. We were melting in there. I don't suppose you found the money, Judd said. Ruth Rose told us what you were up to. Dink shook his head. Sorry, he said. I'm afraid that whoever took the duffel bag disappeared with it, Officer Fallon said. Judd nodded. It must have happened last night after we went to bed, he said. I just don't see how. Officer Fallon shined his light at the ground. It rained last night, so even if the crook left footprints, they'd have washed away. Footprints, Dink thought. I saw wet footprints in that garden shed, he said. Dink pointed through the darkness toward the rose garden. I went in to get Miss the wheelbarrow from Mr. Pocket. That means someone went in there after it rained, Ruth Rose said, and that was in the middle of the night. Maybe the footprints were left by the thief, Officer Fallon said. He put a hand on Dink's shoulder. Show me. Dink led the way across the dark lawn. There it is, he said when they reached the small garden shed. You folks please stay out here, Officer Fallon told Josh, Ruth Rose, and Judd. His flashlight beam found the screwdriver. He removed it and opened the door. He played the light over the floor. Dried, muddy footprints led from the door to the back of the shed. Hold this for me, Officer Fallon said, handing his flashlight to Dink. Stand by the door so I have light. Officer Fallon stepped inside and kneeled to examine the footprints. Then he walked through the shed, checking inside, under, and behind, anything large enough to hide a person. At the back of the shed, he moved the wheelbarrow. He poked at the stack of burlap sacks with a toe. Then he peeled off several of the bags and set them on the floor. Dink saw him bend over and pull something from under the remaining bags. Judd, would you come in here? Officer Fallon yelled. Judd stuck his head inside the door. Is this what you've been looking for? Officer Fallon was holding a dark brown duffel bag. It was fat, as if stuffed with something. A long zipper ran along one side. Judd beamed. You found it, he said. Officer Fallon carried the bag out of the shed and set it on the ground. Under the flashlight beam, he pulled open the zipper. Nearly filling the bag were thousands of dollar bills bound in rubber bands. Officer Fallon looked up at Judd. Is this your money? he asked. Judd nodded. I hope it's all there. What 
what's that, Dink asked. He pointed to something pale green that was stuck to the side of the canvas duffel. It's a band-aid, Ruth Rose said. Don't touch, Officer Fallon cautioned. He pulled a small plastic bag from his pocket. Using the point of his pen, he knocked the band-aid into the baggie, then sealed it. I wonder who this came from, Officer Fallon said. He held his light on the plastic bag. Scoop put on a band-aid like that one yesterday, Ruth Rose said. He burned his finger on his car radiator. I saw one on Ding's Dean's finger, too, Josh said. We all use them, Judge said. He reached into a pocket of his jeans and pulled out a green band-aid. Officer Fallon held Judge's flat band-aid next to the one used in his baggie. The two band-aids were the same. <laughs>